Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, I believe, is um, um, Margaret, Margaret Miller. Miller, I believe. Yes. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I'm just here to uh, speak about uh, the uh, Holistic Greens dispensary. Okay, when, that, when we get to that point. Yep. Okay. Are you representing them or you have questions? I have questions. I reside next door at 249 Russell Street in Hadley. Okay. okay. All right. Um, it looks like the legislature has not reached a decision. Am I correct, Mr. Dwyer? That appears to be the case. The Senate has voted the uh, legislation. The House has voted the legislation, but apparently there are some differences and uh, it has gone to conference. Um, as of the last time I checked, the governor's uh, homepage was listing what he had to consider yesterday and not what he had for him today, but I'm going to check one more time. Yeah, I just checked yes. a little while ago and it says that they hope to have something by next week. <laughs> so, the cynical part of me, Bill, when they go to Senate House Conference Committee, they're uh, certainly uh, fishing for contributions. They all have different priorities on what they want to. Uh, Yes, yes, indeed. What they want to be included, whether it's uh, uh, drive away portable drinks or uh, whatever. But hang on a second. I'll just check one more time. And no, the uh, what's on the governor's desk has not been updated for today. So no bills uh, ready for signature. Oh. And the legislation that we're referring to is? Legislation that would uh, continue the exemption from the open meeting law for meeting by Zoom. Oh. Although it looks like if it does come out, it is going to be good through next April. That's what I, that's what I saw too, yeah. They're pushing for like an eight month extension. So, in an excess of caution, perhaps, what I will suggest is that uh, we, um, we could open the public hearing, but we would probably be best off not taking a vote tonight. Yeah, I agree. Take some information, see what people have to say, and we can continue it to our first meeting in July and see what happens with that stuff. So we won't vote to approve anything tonight except maybe a couple of bills. But any of the regulations and the, the public hearings will just listen, and take comments. So, all right. Um, who is Hadley's iPad? Was that that's Chris Okafor, I believe. Chris Okafor, okay. What, Chris? What have you got for us? You're muted. I, I, nothing, I just said. Uh, Logging for the uh, long war on the MS4 regulations. Okay. Carlene Eddy, do you have anything? Are you here for the meetings? <clears throat> muted. Carlene Eddy. You're on mute. No, whoever it is, they don't have anything, evidently. Um, oh, we do have a bill to pay. We pay for the uh, $423.30 for the Daily Hampshire Gazette for the legal notice that ran in a newspaper for the marijuana dispensary and for the regulations. How much was that again? 
Entertain a motion to pay that? I'll make, I'll make that motion. Pay the Gazette. I'll second it. Pay the Gazette, right. Do a second? I second it. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And we also have an invoice for the final quarter of the year, final, I guess, final quarter of the year for the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for the annual contract, $1,769.95. Entertain a motion to pay that. $1,769.95. Uh, $1, I would move to pay that. Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, any other general information? Questions? Mr. Reedy coming for is what? Mr. Reedy, are you here for a public hearing or for Yeah. Yeah, I'm here for the, the 645 uh Hadley. 645 meeting, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Right. So we can try again for Carlene Eddy, and there's also a uh someone who's joined by phone. If you want to have any questions for the planning board? Now's the time. Did I identify yourself and your interest? Okay. Uh, the phone went unmuted and then muted again. Okay. Well. People are welcome to attend anonymously if they so choose. Right. Um, okay. Let me uh, take, a, you know what we can do, uh, Jim, is uh, we had, uh, we have two other public hearings scheduled. And since they have both requested continuances. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. Want to make the motions, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, sure. I will make a uh, motion to. Uh, okay, Michelson Accessory Apartment. Um, uh, continue. Eight seventeen. To eight seventeen at applicant's request. Correct. So I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Motion. A second here. Mike second. The motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And for the Happy Garage, uh, that would be continued to the second meeting in july is that the request is that right tom 720 yeah, yeah we're, we're waiting for just so just to give an update we're waiting for uh mass dot to get back to us uh still on the plans uh, their due date is june 25th so the hope is an, an understanding that you know fourth of july comes shortly thereafter hopefully by that july 20th i think is the date hearing we should have something final by DOT and then we can present something to you all. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a motion uh, to uh, continue to uh, July 20th at the applicant's request. Okay. I would second that. Motion and second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Carlene Eddy just messaged us telling us that she was here for the Michelson right. matter. Yep. Okay. We could are that out of the way. 
How about um, exotic motors? They said they wanted to be back this week. Yeah, they said they're going to come back with a put with the uh, pictures. Well, maybe Randy will step in during a meeting sometime. But I notice they're keeping the North Hadley place nice and clean and fewer number of cars than it's supposed to have. I'm good. I've gone by there several times and, uh, well, they're doing what they say. That's all that we ask. Do you have any comments on that, Mr. Or you go to buy there more than I do? Um, no, they do seem to be managing their, uh, their traffic there. Okay. Now that they understand what the requirements are. That's all we can ask. Close enough to quarter of seven. I will start by reading the general meeting. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the first hearing is to review and adopt proposed planning board regulations for payment in lieu for inclusionary zoning and regulations for Hadley and regulations for Hadley stormwater. The second hearing will be to review the application of Hadley Holistic Green Dispensary for a special permit adult use marijuana and site plan approval for property located at 251 Russell Street. The complete regulations and, and Hadley application are available upon request via email to Hadley at Planning MA, published twice in the Gazette, June 2 and 9. And with that, Mr. Reedy, you go first. Great. Hadley. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst. Here on behalf of Hadleaf, as the chairman noted, for an adult use marijuana dispensary at 251 Russell Street in Hadley. Um, hopefully this is this is relatively straightforward. Uh, Mr. Dwyer, if I could share my screen, I've got a, just a couple of things maybe to orient everybody to sure. the site, floor plan, et cetera. Get that. And Tom, just in case you missed it, I'm not sure you had connected yet when we discussed the status of the legislation. We are not going to vote on any public hearings tonight. We'll open them and continue them, but until we know that the open meeting law exemption is continued. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Yeah, I know, I know towns are all handling it differently. One foot in, one foot out, I think. <laughs> okay, you can share your screen, Tom. Okay. Thanks, Bill. So just to orient everyone, if you can see my screen, uh, Russell Street, west is to the left, east is to the right. This is 251 Russell Street right here. It's the old, I think it was 5050 Fitness. You've got hasty fence right here just for uh, orientation purposes. N no external site changes are proposed besides signage, which I had sent along to the board um, a little earlier this evening, I've got, I'll bring it down to the street so you can see what it looks like. So this is from the West looking at the site. Um, obviously went through some rehabilitation in the, in the, uh, recent years, um, in a pretty attractive building, but nothing is proposed out here besides refilling the sign. And then as you'll see, there's going to be a had leaf cannabis sign in about this area here. And so then I think what I'll do is I will show you the floor plan. And so this is down is, um, this is the front of the building so that Russell street would run here. You've got your entry coming in off the parking lot. You've got your security vestibule here and then entry You've got another security room. You have four point of sale systems here. And then you've got that locked vault room, men's bathroom, women's bathroom. In total, I don't think the building is more than maybe 2,100 square feet. And I think your bylaw requires no more than 2,500 square feet open to the public. I will show you, I'll go to this sign. So here's just a rendering of what 
um, the site will look like. I mean, again, nothing really changed. You can see the inside, the point of sale systems, and you've got Hadleaf Cannabis here. And this is, this is a compliance sign. What you don't see, but what you will see uh, if approved would be um, lights overhead that uh, they're not necessarily gooseneck, but I'll bring this up. They're like this Charter Oak has something like that. So you'll see that it's above and it splashes against the building. It's, it's focused against the building. And so this nighttime view, it, it's not internally illuminated. It would have uh, those lights above. And then lastly, you've got a rendering of what the sign would look like um, along Route 9 as well. So Hadleaf Dispensary and then, and then Cannabis and in the middle it, there. Is um, that illuminated, Tom? Uh, that, I believe, has a ground mount illumination. I, I believe there's a... Um, uh, light on the ground and if not then it would be that same top it's not internally illuminated but it would have that the top. style precisely tom, tom is that hadley is doing business as name or is that a corporation corporate name yeah so it's hadley holistic greens dispensary llc that is the yeah you know when somebody says hadley asparagus you're pretty sure it's hadley asparagus Suggesting that it's Hadley cannabis, I think it's false advertising. There's no, there's no cannabis grown in Hadley. I don't like it. I think it's false advertising. It says it's a dispensary, not a uh, grow site. Hadley. Hadley. It's bought in Hadley. I guess that's their argument. It's not grown here, though. Hopefully, it's not smoked here. I don't like the name. I'm not gonna. I, I can't vote for that. I'm sorry. I think that's outside our jurisdiction. Well, well, I just made it my jurisdiction. <laughs> I mean, as long as I have four others of you, by all means, then, I mean, I find uh, Mr. Sarsitsky can vote as conscious. I find it offensive. No, un un understood, Mike. I mean, we, we, we hear you. And I'll, I'll talk to him about it. I mean, I think it's it was a, a clever idea um, for a name. Do you, I mean, do you have another suggestion? I, I, don't find it, I don't find it clever at all. I find it offensive. It's not grown in Hadley, period. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, I should come um, up with a different name. I mean, you know, we, sure it's legal, but to suggest that somehow this is Hadley holistic stuff is a bunch of malarkey to not coin a phrase. <laughs> other, comments, other comments or questions from the planning board? Yes, I have some questions. I hope just it's a minute, okay. Just a, minute, just a minute. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me talk okay. to the planning board first. We'll get to you. We will not leave. Oh, I'm so sorry. No problem. No problem at all. Any other questions from the board? So the primary public entrance is from the front, and then there's a also parking uh, lots rear entry. Is that what that was? Let me let me bring it back up, and I'll also bring the site plan back yeah. up. It would be nice to see the sure. And is there existing parking lighting? Or are you adding any? What about parking lot lighting, Mike? I mean, your time. That that's a good that's a good question. Let me get back down to the the street view. But I just want to show from up here. Um, public entrance is over here. This front door you'll see on the next page will be emergency exit. Oh, uh, okay. So this is. And then maybe I'll bring it down to take a look at. Looks like there's a light on this pole, I would suggest. And it looks like there might be a couple of lights on, on the building. And, and Matt, I don't know if you're on and if you can speak at all to if you're going to add any parking lot lighting. Um, no, we are not adding anything else. There's already two uh, two of those big pole lights there, two of them facing the building, one on the parking lot, one in the building that light up that whole area. Okay. So you've got one here and then you've got one on the building. So you have that. Yeah. Well, like, no, if you go to the right down the street and one as well, there's, okay. there's two street lights facing the building. Oh, there we are right there. So one off of that pole and then one off of this pole here. Yeah. Okay. So you've got your adequate one foot candle across the parking lot without- You're not adding any 
lighting. Yes. yes. And so then to orient you, the, the road is probably, you know, beyond where my mouse is at this point. And so you've got here single emergency egress only. And so that's there. And this is the entry over here. And so if you're, you know, to go back to that previous picture, that's back here. And then that other door, that emergency egress door is here. So entry and exit exit will be back here. We'll come in through this area here. So they cannot enter through the front or north side. They have to come in through the east side and that they only get into that entry vestibule and then the the security person buzzes them into the store. Is that how that works? Yeah, exactly. So it's, um, it's, I think they call these man doors, um, man traps, no, probably people traps. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, they would come in, they would show their identification uh, to show that they're of age. The security guard would check it, assuming that, you know, they weren't beyond occupancy um, in the, the main sales or retail area and they're of age, they'd get buzzed in, they'd be able to transact um, their business and then they could, then they would leave. So if there's a line to get in the door, it would logically be on the east side toward the parking lot. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. And I mean, I think, um, you know, m many of the board members know from uh, the Heirloom Collective and then from any of the ones in Amherst from, from Rise up at um, Meadow Street, I think Mass Alternative Care is open on University Drive. Um, Pleasant Trees is close to opening. It's rare that you find lines outside of, you know, of course the, the proprietors wish for it, but it's rare that you find lines. And now folks that go there are, are really efficient about knowing what they want. Um, you know, sometimes they'll come in, ask questions. You'll, have, you'll answer those questions. But now there's a, it's a pretty discerning consumer. And when they go to a place, they tend to know what they want. And so the transaction time is relatively uh, swift. And, and so- do any, do, do any of them ask for leafs or do they ask for buds? That's a joke. <laughs> had, had bud, is that what we're gonna do? Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we don't expect anything like Netta had when they were the first ones to open. No, and, and I could, and I, I think I said it before when I was here for uh, the Heirloom Collective, but they were one of the first two, they were the first in the state, but one of the first two in the entire state. And so obviously the, the demand and the supply were totally different than they are now. This is, you know, this will be the second one in Hadley, but certainly not the second one in the state or the second one in the area. I mean, I named a few oh. in Amherst, and then there's another one down the road, Red Cardinal got approved and they're you know, ready to open on Route 9. And well, clearly the laws of supply and demand apply here just like anything else. Has, has there been, been any indication that there's a saturation point being reached? I'm just curious. Yeah, and, and I, don't, I, I don't think so. So, I mean, these aren't the cheapest places to run. Um, I think the margins are pretty good, Mike. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's wholesale retail, if you will. Right. You, know, you buy wholesale, you sell for retail. It's... Yeah. You know, and with all due respect to all the, you know, um, to the folks who own it and run it, they're, they're like nouveau liquor stores, right? It's, it's somewhat similar where it's, you know, buy it wholesale, sell it retail. You have the margin in between. And I think, you know, when Governor Baker came in, De Deval Patrick said five per county when he started the program. And fast forward when Charlie Baker got in, um, he said, let's let the market dictate. And so, you know, I, I have to trust the, the business judgment of the people that are paying the lease and, and are going to pay for the interior right. improvements that there's something there, you know. Do we know what the proposed hours are? Yeah, I think it's uh, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week is, is what they'd be looking for. And this is just for a little bit more context. This was the group that was going to go into the mall and then the mall looked at their financing and their lender said, not while it's still a schedule one federally illegal substance. And, and so the, the lender said, you choose them or us. And unfortunately for, for the Headley folks, um, the lender won. So they, they found this Kirsten Modesto uh, owns this and, and it was recently vacated and uh, it just seemed to work out. We've obviously been through the process of uh, receiving a variance. We've signed a host community agreement with the, uh, with the select board. And so this is our last stop. Um, 
locally, we obviously have to go through the Cannabis Control Commission and all of their processes uh, to ultimately get approval. So that's where we're at. Any other questions from the board? Margaret Miller? Marguerite Miller? You're muted. Oh, you're on mute. You're, you're still, muted. You're still on mute. Unmute yourself, Miss Miller. Sometimes the devices aren't that easy to. There you go. There we go. I, got it. No. I apologize. No problem. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just um, I live next door at two four nine Russell Street in Hadley. I am the palm reader there. I have resided at this residence since seventeen years. I run an in-home business. So I also live here and I also run my business through here. Um, I have been very concerned since the first time I heard of them coming in to my next door. It is if he wants to go back and show the site plan that he has, I am right next door. There is nothing stopping anything from coming into my property. There is no fence. There's nothing there. Um, the first time that we, that I wanted to speak, uh, my father was very ill in the hospital. When you guys first had your meetings, I wasn't able to make it. Second time I wasn't able to make it. I had to go out of the country to sell some property for my father. So, um, please be very patient with me. This is the first time that I'm able to speak about this, um, situation. Um, I understand that they're keeping the 50-50 building and they're doing all of that, but I have uh, six young children that reside with me in my home. One of my children is a special needs child. Um, I feel that this will be, they're gonna be seven days a week. Um, this is gonna be very disruptive to my family life, to my home life. I run by appointment. It is very rare that I take walk-ins. Um, it's very, very close. If he wants to go back to it, it's literally my parking lot, 50-50. And there is literally into my parking lot. How can I be assured that there will be no one who will purchase their merchandise and go in their parking lot, what is adjacent to my parking lot, to my backyard, where my children are, and use their products? How will I know? that no one will walk next door, do you know what I mean? Or park in my parking lot to go next door. So I have many, many, many concerns about this. Um, and, and that's just the way I feel, I, because I do reside here. I am not just a business, I live here. Mr. Reedy, is it legal for somebody to use the product in the parking lot? No, it, it's it's not. And in, in the there will be security cameras in the parking lot and the Cannabis Control Commission will make sure that there are security cameras in the parking lot. I, I think if um, the abutter it could correct me, I believe this is the property that she was talking about. Yes, yes that's my property. Okay. And so, you know, you have the, the building as the buffer entrance and exits are on this side here. Uh -huh. um, and you've got the parking lot over here. And okay. so there really is no reason for anybody to be heading in this direction. Certainly, I know what you're or, saying, but you have to understand these are people who are going to be taking cannabis. I used to have issues when people were parking at 50-50, they would come into my parking lot. Never mind people who are buying cannabis and gummy bears and using, I understand that it's legal, but I understand that. And I have seen witness that there has been lines and lines of people still. The one in Northampton, there's lines. There's people, there are lines out there. I am aware that if anybody knows Route 9, it is very difficult to make a left off of Route 9 um, coming out of 5050 or my parking lot. We're both adjacent to the same side. I am aware that there's going to be police um, in the building. I'm aware that there's going to be police cars in the building. I do not think personally that it would be very good even for my business to have these things around us. Uh, it's not going to, I don't think that you, even though you say that they're not going to do it, can anyone guarantee me that that's not going to be done and they're going to smoke marijuana while my children are on a porch and they're going to get fumes. My young grandchildren, the oldest grandchild is eight years old and he's the one with special needs. Can anyone say to me, absolutely not. 
no, I apologize. I don't think that that can happen. I mean, Mr. Chair, I don't know if you're looking for an, an answer from, from us. Well, I don't, I, exactly. But you said when someone asks the question, can they do it? Is it legal? No, it's not. But can anyone guarantee me that it's not going to happen while my young children are outside on their porch? It's going to be summertime. It's going to be the fall. W would that happen? Can anybody, can, can anybody give me a guarantee that this will not take place? What about a fence being put up? Would that help to alleviate your concerns? It's still directly next door, sir. It's directly next door to well, my business. Well, unfortunately, this is zone this, so you can't really say they can't put it there. This, this is the zone. I understand, and I can't say they can't put it there, but I could be offended by it. I could not like it to be there. Do we really need another marijuana store? There's so many around. Do we really need another one? Do as personally as a resident of Hadley, do I need one directly next door to my property? And I'm not going against it. I understand that there's a need, there's a want, a need. I understand that there's a retail, but as if you were to live next door, I don't think that you would, I'm just saying that anyone would want it directly next door. We could throw a rock at each other and I'll hit their building. You don't have a day daycare center in your house, do you? No, I don't, but I have a lot of grandchildren. The, the, the one thing about the zoning on this property is there is probably less likely for the marijuana to be an issue on your property next door because of the state regulations and the oversight by the police and the marijuana commission, state commission, than there would be when 50-50 was there. When 50-50 was there, the town has not a lot of control over where they can park. Then it becomes a private matter between the landowners. If it's a marijuana facility, it enters a whole different league as far as regulations and control and oversight. So to guarantee, to be very honest, there is no guarantee. There exactly. For, for anything. No. Whether it's this or a store or 50-50. However, 100%. the longer term regulations the purveyors of this facility don't want them parking on your property. They'll do everything they can to prevent that because they don't want trouble. One of the things about the approval of this facility is we're going to approve it probably at our next meeting, more than likely. It has a one year review. If one year from now, they aren't living up to their end of the bargain, they're going to come back to us, whether they like it or not, to reapprove this this license by the planning board. And if there's issues, you will be you're going to be notified of this reissue of the public hearing. So that's fine. You'll you'll hear about this in advance. And if there's concerns and problems with them, you can speak up and say, "Hey, they're not doing what they're supposed to," and we can deny the license a year from now. We can tell them you're done. You're out of here. I understand that, but. In the year that we're going to be neighbors, yes, and there's go, we're going to be neighbors, very yeah. close okay. neighbors. Um, I'm, and I just hope you that everyone understands my concern. We un we we as living next door, there's gonna be police. There's gonna be police cars. There's gonna be traffic. I've seen the dispensaries before. We've all seen them. There's a lot of outside police. There's a lot of things around there. Um, we N Hadley Route 9, where we are, we're Hadley Park Plaza. Uh, Paul is my neighbor. And we had 50-50. It's a very quiet part. There's, there's not much going on here. There's not, you know what I mean? There's not a lot of in and out and stuff of that nature. It's not going to be quiet. Um, it, it's, there's going to be action going on there. There's going to be things that are going to be in there. And again, I am not against a dispensary. I just don't want it next door, yeah. if that makes any sense. I have yep. very young grandchildren. Uh, no yep. one can say, no, it's not going to happen. I don't need police to come in squad cars. Uh, there's going to be traffic. It, it's just going to be a lot um, for us to live with um, and to make sure that they keep their nose clean. There is no division. Yep. Um, you know what I mean? If so, I, 
there there is no division at this point. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm it's, not sure what you mean by I, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, my by properties. Lot. There's there's what do you mean? I'm not. You, you said there's going to be a lot up the road. Heirloom collection has very low traffic in and out. I've been by there almost every day, and I didn't even know they were open. And they sell both kinds of medical and adult use. Yes, and, and I think there's one going up on Damon Road, too. That's correct. Yes, there is. There's, one, but the there's one, one on Damon Road. Road. The one from across from Stop and Shop. Right. Um, according there's to the, the collection. According, so, according to the police, they just went for their, for their renewal. And mm. the police commented back that they have absolutely no issues and have had no concerns or complaints. I understand that. that but, but all due respect, I understand that. I, I got it. And all due respect. But would you want to live next door to one? Well, you know, the state is going to be wide. You're right. Certain parts of Route 9 have a charm in their own way. And the state is going to be widening Route 9. Yes, right I'm aware. Right past you. And the whole nature of Route 9 is going to change. I mean, some businesses are being destroyed completely. And so mine, just, mine just, will. Mine yeah. will. I have the drain in my yard. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, so it's, you know, the whole nature of Route 9 is changing, right. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Which I understand all that. And I'm, at the, I'm in, you know, progress. Great. I live on Route 9. We all need business. We, we, we got it. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I totally understand all this. But again, I don't want to live next door to one. There's one one-fourth of a mile that way. There's another one three-fourths of a mile that way, two miles up the road. Is it necessary to have one directly next door to me? I just don't want to live with a dispensary next door to me. And it seems that you're unhappy with that, but we don't have a leg to stand on to say they can't go there. They have a legal right to be. I understand, so, but so, I need so, to let but, everyone know how I feel. Also. Okay, and, and, I, and we understand your feelings, understand. like I said, that, and, and if you do have issues, you know, come back to the planning board and the, the zone, this building inspector acts as the zoning enforcement officer between the um, building inspector, the police department and a board of selectmen. There are multiple agencies involved in the town that can address concerns they have if they're on your property. Okay. Now, someone asked me, uh, the gentleman previously, would it help if we had a fence or something put up? Um, would that be possible? That way I'm not so... Those are open. the kind of things that we that, can... That, that sure, sure. That's part of... Yes, we, we can try and stop the impact. Not, if I have no say, I okay, I have no say into this. I live here. I've been a resident of Hadley for so many years, and I understand where you are coming from. Um, I, I own the home, myself and my husband. We own our land. We own our business. But if I understand if you're saying that I have no say in it because it's okay for them to go there, I got it. But can we, something, we need to have some kind of barrier. We need to have something put up. It can't, I can't be that open to them. And then my clients coming in and then seeing a big cannabis sign. Do you know what I mean? Because they just showed it. What they're going to put up there is going to say cannabis. The other one says collection. Does it say that it's a cannabis? Well, there, there is a fence there today. That is a partial fence that only covers the back of the, it's on the left, but all the rest of it where the bushes and everything is, there is no fence there. We can walk directly past there. Those are my trees and you can walk right through where those trees are. That is just a small fence that um, the, that the owner before that put that up. Is that your fence or is that the cannabis property fence? That's the cannabis property fence, okay. which I believe that the DOT is going to be taking down. Who's taking it down? DOT. That's Department that's, of uh, the Highway. Why would, why would they be taking that fence down? Because they're taking my fences on the side of that that goes to my house where I fence my cars in. And my sewer line, the sewer that the DOT is going to be coming in, is taking. See that big tree? That big oh, tree right, right there. there. Right. The DOT has to go through there to get to the well on my property. There's some kind of well, there's some kind of system that I'm the only one who has that. So all where that tree is, see where that trailer was, that trailer is, all that side will be coming down from the DOT. 
Okay, but that's only temporary takes. Come now, they can be put back up when DOT is all done. Yes, they can if we decide to put them back up. But that tree okay. that is all going down, so it'll all be open. Okay. And I'm not going to replant that tree. That's an old, beautiful tree. It's a shame. Right. That's okay. All right. So we can require we can have a have the old had leaf put up a fence on the property. Reinstall the fence after this one is down. Yeah, but you see right there. See where those bushes are. Yeah. They only go halfway. Well, and the fence is back there too. So there's a very large opening that, that they can come through. See, that's all my yard where those bushes, yeah, that's what you fix. The, the only thing we need to be careful of here is that the fence can't come out to the front property line because then the line of vision coming out of your property and coming out of Had Leaf will be greatly right. disrupted. So right. we're going to I understand. Sure Listen, I'm just talking, I'm just throwing things out there to try to make, you know, to try to make our lives a little bit comfortable. If I can't say nothing about it, I, I need to have something that maybe it's not as visible or okay. as bad because it's going to be a big sign that says cannabis, you know, so with I and okay. so we, we do have to be careful about how we say put up a fence. The in that uh, location, the shared property line between the two lots is 931 feet long. Um, so we're really not going to be fencing off the entire property, but we can certainly do a, a distance back from the, um, from the highway right of way, to maybe to the rear of the structure Uh, to the rear of the residential structure. Um, to the point where her lawn is mowed or the backyard ends, probably. Yeah. There's also um, uh, wetlands. There's a stream shown back there. So if Yeah, that is, that is true. If we go too far back, we get into all sorts of issues. But it could, be, it could go the distance of the, just roughly, let me see if I can... Um, well, measurement here and, and toward the front you can only come to the state highway you know right away line you well i don't even know if you want to go that far no because but i think you want to be careful of sight lines yeah no. we would take a look and see when to have that fence either stop or you know have that angle down to a something smaller far enough back so you know both yeah. this driveway once once dot gets done with their work and you know this driveway um, has appropriate sight lines, sight distances, you know, beyond uh, what they need to have. So we can check into that. Yeah. Why, why don't you come back with a plan for a, a fence neck for the, the next meeting, Tom? Sure. That, that way, instead of us trying to design something tonight, you could have a little bit of time to look at it with a better point of view. I think that makes a lot of sense, Jim. Do you also, uh, Tom, do you have access to the state plans of what it's going to look like? I think it's going to be, is that going to be a three lane section there where you've got the center lane that you can get out into yeah. if you're trying to turn left? Yeah, I, I know that. Um, so I work with the, the, the landowner as well. And I know that she has DOT plans. And then if I can't get them, if we can get um, Marguerite's contact information, I could get because obviously, you know, DOT has to go through the process of providing what they're going to be taking from everybody. Um, I also have some folks over at DOT, Jay Ely, that I could reach out to to try to get what they're doing here. And then we can just figure out, you know, not our first rodeo. We can figure out how to put it in a place that makes sense to, you know, it sounds like visual screening. If, if the existing fence is going to come down, something should go back up. So visual screening and then just uh, pedestrian screening, making sure that people aren't trespassing onto an adjacent property is Good. Right. Margarita, have you ever thought that uh, after getting a reading, some of your clients might need a place like this next door? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? With the six grandchildren, I might need a place next door, but all I got to do is go up the street. <laughs> yeah, maybe some low, some low plantings could extend from the end of the fence so that it's not a pedestrian friendly. I and and then I, have, I just have another question. Um, and, and I'm again, I'm not trying to disrupt anything. I'm not trying to, but again, 
the sign that says like next door, the collection, it says collection. And the other one, and, and I know that you're disapproving with the Hadley, which I, I totally understand. But could they put something else besides cannabis on the on the highway on the road? Would that be possible? I would also to put just I don't know. Can someone hear me? I'm joining by phone. Yes. 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 Can you identify yourself? My name is Kim Lambert. I live off of Pine Hill, so I'm also very close. Um, my concerns are Hadleaf does clearly imply I feel like it's grown and sold here and it's not something as a resident I want to be associated with. So I'd like to join in on disliking the name and I'm strongly against the word cannabis on the sign. All the okay. other, mm -hmm. yeah, I think all the other um, cannabis places have a little bit more subtle, you know, heirloom collections. I mean, we all know what it is, but it doesn't jump off the page at you. Um, there's also a concern because you are opening uh, on the circle, the new um, rotary. There's a brand new one opening on Damon Road. So we're, we're experiencing, I know a lot of changes on Route 9, but I cannot get out of my um, driveway when I go down the road to get under Route 9. It is impossible now since we put it in the rotary it's great the traffic's moving, but it's not slowing down, and I'm taking my life in my hands. I cannot make a left. I have to go up, take a right, and I have to go down to somewhere where the mall or somewhere to turn all the way around to go back over the bridge. And I think that traffic is, is a real issue on Route 9, something we keep building Route 9, but we're not considering the traffic. So the other thing I wanted to say is I am dead set against this being open um, on a Sunday evening till 8 p.m. I think Sunday should be a no-no. And, and, and I, you know, maybe I'm old fashioned, but Hadley's, Hadley's losing its charm and it's one of the best places. And I think having something open, a cannabis open on a Sunday from 10 to 8 p.m. is just wrong. So those are my concerns. Thank you for- We, we, used, to, we used to, used to have blue laws. <laughs> I appreciate someone understanding where I'm coming from. Thank you very much. Yep. And that's what I was trying. You can't make a left. And then DOT is going to come here. There's going to be all kinds of construction. It's going to be even worse. And that's starting in the spring. Yeah, it, this yeah is I can wait as long as 10 minutes and I can't get out. In 10 minutes, no. I have sat. And I cannot yes. get out. And I have my mail on the Route 9 also. And I have to be very, very careful to stay on the inside to not get clipped off by somebody you know, and when we have construction, I realize this is all progress and it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's a real consideration for any residents who live along this road. It's um, it's tough. Exactly. So if and I make a left, I can't make a left. I have to make a right, go up to yep. the stop red light, like where the Home Depot is and all that and make a U-turn and come around. Yes, I did the same thing. And four stables, you could lose your car in their parking lot. So many people have turned around in their dirt parking lot. <laughs> exactly. We're gonna we're gonna have my fear is that I don't want to see pedestrians hurt. Um, Route nine is impossible. I've had I've raised kids here and they're not allowed to cross it with bikes to get to the bike path. It's an unusual bike path unless I drive them to it because it's impossible to get across it. It's impossible in a car and on foot. Not happening. I've done so, the same thing. Those are, those are the off. concerns. We have to take walks. We have to go in the car to take the walk. Yep. Yeah, I agree so, with you. And thank you for thank you for understanding. I yeah, I, and I would like I would like, and I've forgotten the gentleman's name, really to consider a different name and not put the word cannabis. I, I think there's a, a thousand clever names, and um, that's a concern. I don't think you need to say it's cannabis. I think anybody who knows what they're looking for is going to easily find it. Right. Does it have to say cannabis right on Route 9? Like right next, does it really? You know, I, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be, but cannabis right on Route 9 next door to our businesses and our homes? Come up with something more clever. I would agree that it's not very sensitive to the neighbors. Uh, all we can do is ask them to reconsider i don't think we can make them change their sign graphics you can i understand that them. but they have to understand that they're coming into a community and if they want to be a part of our community and be our neighbors that they need to try to make 
you know, them coming in a lot less stressful to is, the people is, who is, are in the community. Is, is Matthew McTeague one of the owners of this business, Tom? Yeah, he's he's a he's a manager. And why, like, doesn't he, what, why doesn't why doesn't he speak up a little bit? Let's hear from him. Well, if if yeah. I could just b- before we go down that road, because I think we've gotten off topic with a lot of the comments that I've heard f- from a butter. Some are germane and we'll go back and I'll I'll talk to Matt and Andrew about the name and, and see if there's any latitude to move. I don't know, Mike, that we can get off Hadleaf because that is the, the LLC name. And, and so the cannabis. Well, control- I, I know that you're representing him, but he's coming to Hadley to sell people in Hadley. So are you not, are you saying you don't want your client to say anything at this meeting? No, I think what I'm saying is I, I'd like to talk first because I think we've started to go off the rails a little bit for, for what actually is applicable to mm-hmm. this hearing. I mean, I'm hearing about, with all due respect to the abutters, Stables parking lot and the difficulties of taking yeah. lefts uh, onto Route 9, which I haven't heard one thing about the cannabis dispensary and its traffic impact. In fact, I've heard the opposite. And so I just want to kind of separate what we're hearing from the abutters about the current situation with Route 9 and the anticipated yeah. worsening. Right. And, and and wait, 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 wait a minute, ladies, ladies. The chairman will let you speak. Let Mr. Re- let Attorney Reedy speak. Please do. Please be respectful and stop interrupting. Thank Mr. you, Reedy. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, I just want to get back to what we're talking about with the dispensary and its fairly uh, actual lack of impact on traffic. And this this is a retail establishment. If getting in and getting out isn't easy, people aren't going to go. I mean, it's just, I represent convenience stores. And it's one of the things is if it's not convenient, people aren't going to go. It's it's kind of the human condition to find what is easy. And so likely folks who are traveling in an easterly direction and will continue in an easterly direction will pull in and then pull out. It might take them once to try to go westerly. And they say, you know, this it has good product, but I'm not going to make that trip. And and so I just want to refocus. I think looking at the fence, the screening makes a lot of sense. I don't see an issue with that before the next meeting. I'll put, um, we'll put our heads together and see if there's a way to come up with, after I see the DOT plans, replacing the fence, and then thinking of some maybe low lying shrubs or some other sort of physical barrier between the two properties. That makes a, a lot of sense. Well, that's I appreciate that, but I think this board's Mr. also Mr. Sarzinski. Mr. Sarzinski, you've not been recognized. Let Mr. Okay. Reedy continue to speak. I thought he was through. I thought he was through. Sorry, Please. Tom. I'm very long winded. I'm an I'm an attorney, so I can I can go for, um, and you know the cannabis. It's it's a good point. And what I was saying to you, Mr. Sarzinski, about Hadleaf is the Cannabis Control Commission has certain requirements um, when it comes to naming. You, you can't have an LLC name and then call yourself something else. And so that's where the Hadleaf piece comes in. I'll, I'll talk to, to Matt and Andrew about the cannabis piece. There are other, um, there's a Holyoke cannabis uh, in Holyoke. There's a Caroline's cannabis out of Uxbridge. Um, those have, those are cannabis stores and it says cannabis. And when we're talking about the number, because I heard a lot, you know, there's there's another one a quarter mile, another one three quarters of a mile, Damon Road. So Hadley decided to have two dispensaries. They decided as a community, as a town, to allow two dispensaries. There are not many places in town where a dispensary can go. Hadley, I think, has made a conscious decision to allow these sorts of uses along Route 9, in the business corridor. There is one on the Easter easterly extreme uh, town line. I mean, I don't know that you can, besides being at Domino's, I don't think you can get any further to, to Amherst while still being in Hadley um, than that property. And then this is appropriately spaced and is in a business zone. So as, as we're talking about housing, it, you know, we're not, with all due respect, we're not putting this in a neighborhood. We're putting it on Route 9 in a business zone, in an existing small uh, building. I mean, this isn't some Walmart of weed, right? We're we're not talking about a large footprint here. And so, and I'm, and I'm happy to listen and take all of this stuff back. And if you want to talk to Matt, by all means, please do. But I just want to make sure that we're, we understand what, what we're talking about here and it's existing building 
new use that isn't as new as you know, it used to be. So thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Sarzinski. Okay. Who would like to speak next? I would, oh, yeah. again, this is Tim uh, Lambert. Yeah. Um, I think that although you are correct that it is a business corridor, it is our neighborhood and there are residents who live here um, and that may be unusual. So I, I sort of take a little bit of sense of that. Um, and again, I appreciate if they would consider taking the word cannabis off. It, other stores have not had it and done very well. And I would like them to consider, um, you know, Sunday. That is uh, a day we all are home and working hard. You want to get out and, and there is going to be traffic. I, I disagree with you strongly. It will affect the traffic. I live on this road and I'm here every day, seven days a week, 24-7. So... I know you're probably going to have a police, you know, police there too with traffic, but these are considerations and they are very real. So anything that you can do to have a consideration would, would really be appreciated. Ms. Miller, you well, had some more to add? Well, yes. And uh, where we're trying to say, I know that we have said stables and stuff is because we live here on the street. Um, we're just trying to, and I was trying to say that in the beginning, that making the left out of our properties is very, very difficult. Um, we was, me and that other lady was just making examples of it, how difficult it is and how we have to go about it to do this. I do take under offense a little bit also that they're saying that, well, this is Route 9. Yeah, we know it's Route 9. We know we live here. We bought our properties here. We understand that, but we live here um, from 10 till 8. You know, Sunday, Saturday, I like to be outside. We like to be outside with our kids. We like to do things. Um, we're just very, again, extremely concerned, extremely concerned about the name cannabis on Route 9. We do not live in Holyoke. We live in Hadley. Um, we have a very small community here. Um, they, they should be respectful coming into our environment. We understand that, you know, things need to move on, but we would like to be heard and also to be a little bit respected coming into our environment. This is our environment. We live here. We need to have some respect given to it. Are there other neighbors that have these concerns that you're expressing this evening? I think I'm, I'm, I'm the one who lives directly next door to them. All right. The rest are, um, there's, a, there's a house across the street. There's another house is across the street, but I'm the one who lives directly next door to them. Well, would Any you, other comments we haven't heard yet? Yeah, Jim, I'd like to make a comment. The, uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is trying to promote mixed use. This is an example why mixed use does not work. Anytime a business wants to go in, whether it was uh, Lowe's or whether it was the apartment complex on the uh, Hadley Amherst line, and there are many, many issues where the neighbors don't want it to happen. So if we ever have the idea that we want to have a mixed use zone, residential and business, I don't think it ever will work because people will object to businesses coming in next door to where they live. So I think that's just something we have to be aware of from a planning board perspective. And okay. Great. That's yeah. <laughs> the planning board discovered uh, that we do have a, a bit of power aside from what is enunciated in the uh, zoning bylaw, uh, starting with uh, the Dover Amendment and Five Colleges Inc. and Eversource trying to put their solar field up in back of the, the mall. Uh, and even, even the, the buildings in, in the center of town, the new uh, library and the senior center. So, uh, you know, we have some power and, you know, I, I don't know how, how far we can go to and uh, use that power, but, I'm certainly willing to try. And, and could I just say something, please, with all due respect to everybody? I'm not going against Lowe's. I'm not going against Whole Foods. I'm not. I'm going next to a distillery that has going to have a sign that says cannabis directly next door to my home. I understand that I purchased this property as a mixed use, and that's why I purchased it. I wanted to have an in-home business. That's why I'm on Route 9. I am all about expansion and business. I would love if another Lowe's or Hadley or another um, Whole Foods came in or uh, Ulta. 
I have no disagreement with these businesses. This is a sign. This is a building that sells marijuana and cannabis, and they will have it illuminated next door to my house where I reside. If they want to put in a beauty parlor, maybe not that bad. I would go do my hair. It would be next door. Yeah, July 6th. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, any other speak? new comments? Can I speak? Sure. Yes. Um, first, before I get into my comment, you may see on the screen that I've raised my hand. I think we haven't had this situation yet where we had so many opinions wanting to express at once, but there is at the bottom, there's a thing called reactions and you can raise your hand and that might help us not speak over each other and make the chairman's job easier. Um, getting to my point, I was gonna ask Tom what if he would, when he's pu putting his head together with, I think it's Matt and what was it, Andrew? Was yes. in it? Just think about the possibility if, if cannabis needs to be in your name, it could be a smaller font and be underneath. You know, Maybe it's Hadleaf, in big letters and underneath it says cannabis sales in a much smaller font um, instead of being so, uh, you know, it kind of looks more like Springfield Post Road than Hadley Route 9, you know? Thank you. Yeah, no, I, um, we hear you loud and clear. You, you guys have known me long enough to know that I take what you say, take it back and have strong suggestions based on my experience, not only with you, but other boards as well. So, you know, we'll thanks, be- Thanks, Tom. No, we respect you too. Well, thanks. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and excuse me, this is why Jim gets paid the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Help us play nice in the sandbox. Yeah. And just one clarification, uh, Ms. Miller, when, this is the first hearing before this board. The uh, prior hearings that you perhaps missed were in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I just wanted to clarify that point. I understand that, but that was not, I, I really wanted to, but my father was very, very ill. I couldn't make it at I, that I time. Just, and then I, the other time I was in Mexico and there was no way that I was going to get reception and, no, and make I, the just, phone call and come through. I'm only making the point that this is the first time, you, you haven't missed a chance to speak with the planning board. This is the first time we have taken this up. Thank you. And I appreciate everyone listening to my concerns and, and understanding. I truly, truly appreciate that very much. M Marguerite, you're incredibly well-spoken, and I really hope you would consider running for elective office in Hadley at some point. I would love to be there with you guys. I'll sign, the, I'll sign your, uh, your nomination <laughs> papers. I'll be the first Thank one. Thank you. Okay. I think you that could go for um, Kim Lambert as well. She was also- Sure, here. exactly. We have no, no we need, we need, you, we need, need more. This is not a politi political action, so we'll leave okay. out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll con we'll continue this hearing to July 6th at 6.45 p.m., at which time we would expect to make a vote on this. And in the meantime, Mr. Reedy will come back to us with taking your comments into consideration and see what kind of progress has been made on that, those items. Thank you. And then we'll be able to do the Zoom meeting again at that time. Absolutely. Yeah, well, well the or only not. thing that we're not sure of, we're expecting it to be a Zoom meeting, but as the beginning of the meeting, you probably heard how the state is talking about continuing the Zoom or not continuing the Zoom or some hybrid mix there of the two. So we're not sure what the next meeting will be, but um, if you have any questions about what it's going to be, just go to the town of Hadley website, go to the town clerk and she has all the agendas posted and go to the planning board agenda and it'll tell you what kind of a meeting it'll be Zoom or if it will be live in one of the rooms of the, of the town hall, the senior center or wherever it's going to be. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And then we'll be able to, he'll, he'll be able to express to my concerns. All over again, yes. Okay. One, way, one way or another, either it'll be live in person or on the computer again. All right, I appreciate that. Okay, for both. So we do have another question from the phone. Jim, someone's hand. Yes, is yes. Is that Kim? I'm all set, but thank you. You're up. Go ahead. 
Your hand is up. Your hand is raised. On oh, my phone? If yeah. it is, I'm all set though. I, I don't have any other questions. Okay, okay. that's fine. Okay. I, 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 make I sure. can take care of that for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We don't need a we don't need a vote on it, right, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, no, I think we're okay. We're fine. We're within about well, time allotment. Well, okay. Well, we don't need to vote to continue. Is, is that no. yeah? No. Okay. Okay. All right. You, All right. Next, you, next. You may week. want to continue to a date and time certain. I mean, with I don't know if you need a. Are you saying you need a vote on the continuation, or you're just unilaterally? No, because, because we're within the. the a lot of time and it's still the same public hearing we can just continue the hearing without it you want to you want to hear a vote time to make official no 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 as long as you're continuing it so it's it's july 6th 645 correct continue. Right. that's it i'm fine then okay okay Kay. thank you gentlemen i guess i'm going to sign off thank you all very much thank you, Have a great welcome, thank you. Thank you for thank attending. you bye-bye bye. thank you thank you thank you ken okay regulations we'll take up the uh the first one will be the regulations for store Hadley stormwater. I think we've beaten that one to death quite a bit, but if anybody has any questions on it, I mean, the regulations are, like I said previously at our last meeting, they are both lengthy and complicated and a number of boards in town will have their input on those regulations, the conservation, the building inspector, um, the highway department and the planning board. We will be kind of be, be initially the uh, overseer of it, but the final issues will really be governed by or taken over by the building inspector who was the so-called administrator of the stormwater stuff. I saw that Ken sent us a email either yesterday or, you know, I, I just saw it this morning and I have not had a chance to open it. Is there anything that he should hit bullet points on anything that's new? So if I, if I may, Mr. Chair, that, that particular document is not related to the regulations that this public hearing is about. Okay. Um, that document was uh, part was of our last discussion, which were your subdivision regulations oh, yeah. of which those should be updated to <laughs> basically incorporate the new MS4 permit. Um, so that's for your review and consideration. There are some ideas with regards to uh, adopting LID um, as options. And I think that, you know, the board um, at, at a future meeting, we can discuss how, you know, how to incorporate those and, and go from there. Just, for, just to keep you up for your awareness, Mark, the stormwater, yeah, the subdivision regulations were updated a few years ago and we made some changes. And to update the subdivision regs, it's a very similar meeting to adopting the uh, stormwater regulations and the inclusionary zone. And we posted in a newspaper, we hold a public hearing and we, we talk about it and we adopt them or we don't adopt them. So. It doesn't trigger the town meeting oh, no town meeting right right no town meeting vote on those things right okay thank you jim any discussion on the storm any other discussion on the stormwater regs if not entertain a motion to accept them i'll make a motion to adopt the uh ms4 stormwater regulations second the motion and a second any other discussion Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then we have the payment in lieu for the inclusionary zoning. Go back for a second. Who seconded that? I Mike. did. Mike. Oh. And that keeps us within the June 30th uh, state re requirement. We've met that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good work, gentlemen. On the inclusionary zoning, the proposal is to, for the payment in lieu, it'll be $100,000 for each inclusionary zoning unit that is required. Um, or if the developer can prove that they could build it for less, they would just have to provide the appropriate proof and not just hearsay, but real documentation. Um, 
right now with the price of lumber, I doubt they could do it for less than 150. Well, that was going to be my question is what if, I mean, that 100,000 isn't tied to any size unit, you know, so we're making an assumption that they're not building McMansions and for a hundred thousand, they'd get out of the, what, they'd get out cheap. On a, the the hundred thousand is based on approximately a 12 to 1400 square foot house or apartment. Mm -hmm. Yes. If, if they, I mean, it's going to be affordable. Right. It can't be affordable and be a McMansion. It's got to be in that size range. But it, it, his point is, Mark's point is well taken. I think we have to think really about deciding that contributions to the insurance trust have to be tied to the value of the project. If somebody's bringing, building five McMansions that are going to be worth $5 million, the contribution should be commensurate with that and not follow me. It yeah. just should, it should be. I mean, it's, it's not right. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that because remember the rule is that we, what we heard from the state is a unit's a unit. So if someone, yes, yeah, someone's putting up five bedroom dwellings and calling them affordable. Well, no, just, no, no, no. They're putting in no. a subdivision of five, five unit, five bedroom dwellings. Mm -hmm. um, but to meet the standard of having a unit added to the affordable housing inventory, there is no requirement at the state level that it tracks what the developer is putting in. Uh, oh. You could put in a, um, you can put in a, uh, you could do a one bedroom, you could do a studio apartment. That was, as long as it was properly dedicated as affordable, a unit is a unit. So I understand where you're coming from, Mike, but at the same time, I'm looking at it from the point of view of keeping up the affordable housing inventory population. Um, I'm just afraid. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm. I'm just, uh, the, the other issue I have with it is that, you know, just the, just the flat number. Um, I thought that might be where you were going, Mike, uh, but- no, I, just, excuse me, go ahead. Yeah, I do think that having a flat number in the regulations that we can change if we have to, I, I think I'd rather take a little more time on this and maybe bring oh, exactly. it back when we oh, take yeah, but the- yeah. subdivision regulations and maybe see if we can come up with something that has a, a more of a the formula we were striving for we, we don't have to adopt the inclusionary zoning tonight you know somebody well, we, can can't, put up, we can't anyway somebody can put up yeah. five mcmansions at a million and a half each costing what six and a half seven million dollars and they don't have to kick in a penny and someone can put up six houses for 450,000 each and they have to put something in that doesn't seem right to me it's an out no and and i understand that if they're if they're doing five bedroom units and they have to put an affordable in it's not going to be a five bedroom affordably it you know they can if it's affordable it might be a two bedroom it might be a, my, my point is if, if they put five houses in, they don't have to put an affordable unit in no right if they go to six right yeah right but I mean, but i think the thing we have to look at is there's kind of a teeter totter that if we do a fixed number and it's and it's considerably less than what the cost to build one is, we're not going to get any built because it's just it's going to be a no brainer for them to just oh I'll just pay the hundred thousand if it, instead of building one for one hundred eighty if yeah. we put in if we said two hundred and it was actually one hundred eighty then they say well maybe I'll just build it you know. Uh, you know, there's some point in there, and and that's and that's something worth more debate. Do we want to just make it easy for them to slam out of not building affordable? I think we're hearing a lot of when we hear from the public, we're hearing call for more affordable, and then that's usually when we remind them that we're the only community in the area that's 
over 10 percent and and some are going to come up come off the rolls but it's just something to keep in mind that at some point and and i think bill and jim have may, maybe already mentioned that that when that time comes that we do find that we're at a shortage we could increase that number to incentivize building the units instead of throwing you know, just for instance, the Dion property that was sold off of Middle Street, uh, there was talk about putting five larger houses in there as opposed to a bunch of senior housing, 55 and older. Older, So that, you know, if, if 30 senior housing units were put in, then something would have to be contributed to the insurance trust. If they put five McMansions in there, not a nickel comes in. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. And, and that is true. However, you know, we could we could always change that number. That, that's, that's that's a zoning bylaw change. Yeah, exactly. But I just well, well Mike, Mike, to, to answer Mike's question a little bit, I mean, we the number was a variable uh, number there, and the fact is, uh, if we continue to build ten or twelve housing units per year, and if none of the existing affordable housing units came off our rolls. Uh, it would take us 20 years to get down to below 10%. So that's that's one point. The other point is if the if the town t accepts the money and builds the unit, we have to pay the prevailing wage, which is going to escalate the cost of that unit. Whereas if the builder or the developer builds it, he's not having to pay uh, the prevailing wage. That's a question mark too. I'm not sure oh, how that would work, but daily wage point. does take place. Yeah. Well, and the, the I don't believe the intention of the affordable housing trust is to have the town construct anything. It is to utilize that money and give it toward the developer who wants to needs to build or wants to build some affordable units to encourage them to do it. Exactly. Okay. You make a good point, Jim. Towns. Not only Hadley, most towns do not do well managing real estate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and the one group in town that probably could manage it fairly well is the, uh, the what is this, the, uh, the one that has Golden Court and the buildings behind it. That has the uh, housing authority. Yeah. Well, and, not, and, not really. And, and, and they, oh. have, they have specific instructions from the state not to get involved in, the, in any of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, anyways. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just continue these regulations to a future date. Let's say a month from now, which would be July 20, to review them again and... We can we can continue this hearing for a while to make a decision on this. It doesn't have to be done tonight. We're well, on the July twenty. Not make a motion to continue to July twenty. Is the is the flat hundred thousand? Is that the only issue, and why we're continuing it? Or well, I mean, it, it is. It, it could be anything we want to bring up about this about this inclusionary zoning regulation. I guess we're going to continue it anyway because we don't know the status of right open meeting law. Okay, but. We, you know, we, 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 can, we can talk about anything with this particular regulation that we want to change. That's the, that's the right. advantage of it being a regulation. Right. If we didn't have the open meeting law concern, I was going to say, let's go ahead and pass it because it's you know, at least get the 100,000 in there because we can change it later. But it, where are we right now? Do we leave it with a convoluted calculation? No, no. no. It it, the bylaw said it would be according to regulations developed by the planning board. Okay. So, so well, if we don't adopt a regulation right now, we just don't provide a payment in lieu option. Okay. Um, and as far as I am aware, there is only one subdivision that is even affected by this. Okay. Because um, the Barry Roberts project got a, a variance. So we're just looking at uh, the impact on Colony Drive, which would be one unit one way or another. Um, and it's kind of hard to, to make a decision. I think it's kind of hard to make a decision when you have so few real life examples to work off of. 
So that's why I'm just thinking that maybe maybe we need to give this some more thought. Okay, I will second the motion Jim's about to make. Yeah, we got a motion and a motion to continue in a second. Now, the one good thing about this, if you would, is we've advertised the regulation. It is pending. So if something were to come in, they would be subject to the regulation. We just haven't voted on it. Got it. Got it. And we could vote on it pretty quickly to make that change. Okay. So we we don't want to drag it on for a long time, but we certainly can drag it on for a short time. Right. There's no pressure on us because there's no one waiting on us at this point. Yeah. There's no queue, right? Yeah. Yeah, the only one that might be wanting to do something with this is the one off of Shattuck Road that is subject to the one unit. And he has an apartment that he was going to make affordable. But if he has the option of contributing, he may want to do that instead. But right now he's got to put he's got to put an apartment in or build a unit someplace to make it affordable in one of his existing places. And he would manage it. That would if if, if he puts an apartment in, I believe. I believe he would manage it or he could hire somebody. We, we know from experience, this is one thing we do know from experience, managing rental, afford, affordable rentals is a lot easier than managing affordable uh, fee ownership. Correct, yeah. What, what examples are you thinking of there, Bill, just to inform me? The whole ex well, you weren't here for the whole exercise with Barry Roberts uh, and the condos, where we were learning that it is a a convoluted process to go through setting up a lottery, an affordable housing lottery. To if if Barry had put in affordable units as part of his development. He would have had to contract with an agency that would run an affordable housing lottery. And there would have to be deed language um, that imposed an affordability restriction, which is all well and good when it's buried, when it's one developer running the creation of a project. But going forward, there would be individual affordable units hitting the market at variable and random future dates. And the question would be whether the individual homeowner who is trying to sell the house would have to go through the exercise of hiring the consultant and doing the lottery, the bidding, or would that have to be the burden of the condominium association going forward? Um, and then we learned that there is a um, there is an escape hatch on affordable uh, single affordable units, which is that if you make a good faith effort to go through the exercise of marketing it as affordable property, and you can't find a buyer, you can. I guess, buy out or negotiate your way out of the affordability restriction. So it was turning into a, just a current log jam and a future minefield of who's going to be monitoring these things. And so you get to the point that you, Mark, are the owner, proud owner of an affordable condo on uh, East Street Commons, and you go to sell it having forgotten that it uh, was uh, sold to you with an affordability covenant. And I'm representing Ken, who is eager to uh, find, uh, to move off into his retirement years. And um, I go through all the documents and I say, hey, you have an affordability restriction here. He doesn't qualify, right? He may or may not qualify. Your realtor, who listed it without checking is mad at you because you failed to mention it. <laughs> and even if he is eligible, we may be uh, looking at a closing in six months rather than in 45 days. Yeah, you, your realtor may have told you that it was worth 650, but the affordability clause may have 
brought it down to 400. And meanwhile, the markets are changing and somebody may have qualified for a mortgage when it was 3%, but the mortgage rate went up to 4%. So the numbers change. So in your minefield. Okay. One other thing, Mark, the uh, we had the agency that manages these affordable units come in, and they are like real estate agents. They take a percentage of that as long as they're managing it. So there is a third party involved that is uh, taking some money off the top as well. Yeah, the, the, the own, we couldn't believe what a quagmire ownership was. Mm-hmm. It sounds easy, but when, like Joe says, devils are in the details, we got the detail, we got some of the details, not all of them on this, and it was just mind boggling. Yeah. So. yeah, and you'd be surprised how much money the agency makes just by keeping track of it. Ken, maybe you can uh, talk to uh, Kim about adding another branch to the PVPC. Uh, office. It could be a real estate management. We, we actually did talk to uh, Larry Smith did explore that as an option. Yeah. Uh, getting PVPC certified. It would, as, it would be nice to have a nonprofit handle that. Well, there are nonprofits who are handling it. Uh, hey, also, they're truly not nonprofit, Mark. They, uh, the, the big pig makes a lot of money. Yep. But there are some. Was it housing allowance project, or I forget which which was which now. But there there are agencies that nonprofit agencies that do this, and that was what got Larry interested. Maybe PVPC could do this. That's right. Um, and he was pretty quickly discouraged by the complexity of getting certified by the state to. Mm-hmm. Fill that role. Yeah. Yeah, he, it, he, legal office inside, too. Right. Yeah, it, uh, it quickly became more than a simple thing. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you all for. for we have a education. motion and a second to continue this to July 20th. 20th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion can I, can I reopen the MS4? Um, Sure. I think that, you know, we did vote to adopt it. And yes, that meets our requirement. But I suspect we I probably should just make a note that we should revisit it on in our July 6 meeting. After we know the open meeting law, yeah, we probably should revote it. Oh, that's right. We got to. Yeah, that's what we, we need to revote that. Advice. I'm sorry, we shouldn't be willing yep. to accept it. You're right, Mr. Dwyer. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me make a motion to uh, w- withdraw the acceptance. Yeah, withdraw the vote and move to continue. I would second that. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe abstains. Motion passes unanimously to, with- to, to withdraw and re vote on July 6th. Good point. I forgot that. Is that 4 0 or 5 to 0? Five zero. Joe, do you do you support the vote? I I went to get a drink of water. Yeah, so you're a tall drink of water. I'm voting. I could I could hear you all. Yep. <laughs> it says it's a drink of water, but it's in a red solo cup. So no, I did, I, that's why I didn't want to show it on the screen, but he picked it up right away. <laughs> At least it's not a green bottle. Yeah, you know. yeah, Joe doesn't drink the, the the drink. Joe doesn't drink beer. Mike and I can attest to that. <laughs> He's a cheap date at Fenway or uh, Gillette. Yes. Okay. Any Uh, other? Do you have anything else for us, Ken? No, I think um, you know. If July twentieth, maybe I shall join you at that meeting. um, If not, also just for the purpose of getting through the the approval of MS four, but to talk about those. Subdivision regulations. Um, that would be good. Review. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, I think, um, you know, I have the contract being reviewed. Um, I utilized, um, and you'll be able to review it once it's complete um, with regards to the work plan for next year. 
which probably will extend to um, maybe start working on like the actual rules and regulations for the planning board. I know that's been stuck. Um, you know, we've kind of, that's, there's, there's been always been other important things that needed to occur. Um, but I, I will leave it to the board um, if that particular work plan needs to be amended. Um, but I, I will share that with you. Um, yeah, that, that'd be good to dis to, so we'll discuss that on the 20th. Yeah, Ken, would you, uh, when we did redid the subdivision regulations last time, they, the one pressing issue was the fact that when do we release the last lot that we're holding in the restrictive covenant? And uh, whether the road was in or whether, so we have that settled. Could you just, when you do present it, the three or four bullet points that we would be changing or we would have to change from our subdivision regulations? Yeah, I, you know, I think because this is particular to just ensuring its um, relation to the new MS4 permit, um, I yeah, definitely can present those changes. There are going to be options for the board. Um, they are specific to low impact development. And this may be a conversation that may, you know, understanding maintenance, especially of town accepted roads, um, that could be an issue for the town, uh, or it couldn't be. But I think, um, you know, having that conversation after, you, after you've reviewed the language, we can definitely go through those bullet points. Um, you know, and if there are some other suggestions regarding the subdivision regs, um, you know, as, as you are aware in, in your interactions with it over the past two years, uh, maybe this is also time just to kind of do a quick glance on other items within the subdivision regs that, you know, may be troublesome or be in conflict. But with regards to what I s submitted to you, that is specific to MS4 um, and the stormwater stuff. So, you know, there's just some minor changes with regards to compliance with permitting in general, um, because I think in your current bylaw, in your current regulations, it is specific to zoning. Um, and so this now includes stormwater and wetlands um, and just the alignment and approvals that you would need elsewhere within the development permitting process um, among some other minor things. But I think it's worthy of a discussion. Okay. Anybody have anything else? But Jim, uh, just one thing that probably Bill should put on the agenda. There is a extra driveway going in on a development uh, on off of Megan's Way. And Bill, if you could look into our records, did we vote a special permit to allow a driveway other than across the frontage and a, a house on uh, Megan's Way? So just look it up in the files. Yeah. yeah. The and reason I I'm saying is because uh, there is, they just put in a driveway across the frontage. So maybe in the future, when we say a driveway other than across the frontage, if that's what they're requesting, they cannot have two driveways. That's what the bylaw says. Is that right? Okay. I, I didn't look at. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but remember there are two lots in that subdivision that are not actually in the subdivision. There are two ANR lots there. So they could have a, a driveway on the subdivision and a driveway on the uh, main street. Yeah, that might be a, that, that might be a, a very minor loophole that someone could exploit. Yes. Okay. Uh, Okay. I'll, I'll try to take a look at it, but yeah, please, uh, please do it because uh, someone, two people brought it up to me. Yeah. I've run past that. So I saw yeah. that. Okay. I'll, um, what I can do easily is get the, I can download the subdivision plan from the registry of deeds without having to try to dig through our files, wherever they might be at the moment. Okay. Good idea. Thank uh, you. And I can send that around and we can just figure out which lot it is that we're talking about. Yeah, it's the one at the southeast end of 
Megan's way. It's, you know, as you're coming from the east heading west, before you turn on to Megan's way, that corner lot now has a driveway onto Megan's way and uh, Huntington. And okay, well, let me just see if we have isn't anything. That right, Uh, uh, Quinlan Hilltop. Okay. Okay. I am going to, let's, I, I do happen to have that here. So let me see. Well, there is an advantage to Zoom meetings for you, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's great. It is, yeah. uh, it is so much more efficient. Um, okay, now let me see if I can just have to make this down a little bit. Uh, okay, so let me see if I can now share this. How's that? Lot two, yes, that's the one. Lot two is an a and lot. Um, oh, it looks like Kevin's is an A&R too. And it is subject to a drainage easement. And yeah, he still has that little retention basin or whatever that's still there. Yeah. Oh, those, th th this is why it, although it appears to be a seven lot subdivision, it is not subject to inclusionary zoning because three of the lots are ANR lots. Right. But the, my question to you, Bill, is uh, I don't recall if they applied for that special permit for a driveway other than across the frontage. Uh, I would say probably not just because I haven't seen a lot of those recently. I have, I, yeah, we've just had a few and, uh, so, but, um, and there is, uh, okay. Yes, we did, uh, do one for Quinlan in, uh, Hilltop Estates, and let me see what that is. That's that'll be 2014. Well, okay, so it's a little, um, there was a plan. Um, so it looks like we did an access across other than the frontage for lots two and seven so that they could be, um, this access will be the only access to the land depicted on the plan. Other existing access will be taken out of service permanently. So I believe what we were doing was granting those two lots permission to access. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Get back into Zoom. Okay, got entirely too many windows open here now. That is kind of a dangerous top of the hill there because I run that frequently. And if there's, you know, you run towards traffic. So I constantly, as I approach the top of the hill, I look back. If no one's coming behind me, I cross to the wrong side. So I'm running with traffic. So if someone comes over the blind hill. You're right. You can't. I don't want them swerving into the oncoming lane because 
I find anyone, whether I'm five feet off the pavement or 10 feet off the pavement, they go into the other lane just to be safe. Yeah. So I tend to cross the road and keep the drivers on the right side of the road. But adding more driveways there is not going to make that better. Well, that's that's the, exactly the purpose, correct? Yeah. So uh, June 4th. Um, let me just see what. Uh... So there was a subsequent plan. This uh, plan is dated March 11, 2014. And the there was a June 6, 2014 plan as to lots two and seven, which may be um, probably is at the office or what's left of our office. Um, so, um, yeah, I suspect we did approve access across other than the frontage so that they could drive, they could have a driveway on Megan's way. And you're saying they put a, put a driveway onto Huntington now too. Yeah. For lot two. Okay. Yeah. And this, there's two driveways, I think in the next house to the east down the hill. A uh, lot one. Or one where they put the new garage in. They added a detached down the hill. I, yeah. So there's two well, anyways, it's not a heart transplant, but it's kind of FYI for all us members. So when it comes up before us at the next time, we make it perfectly clear. That well, it should be perfectly clear. So um, uh, I don't know if Tommy would check that before he approved. Yeah, I'm not sure who gives driveway permits now. Um, I think it's DPW. Oh, maybe that's Chris. Okay. Um, and yeah, it would not necessarily be obvious if someone asked for a driveway permit across their frontage that, uh, there may be a reason why they shouldn't get it. A restriction, right. Okay. Well, we can, uh, we can find out, uh, uh, um, We can find out some more about it. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for looking. So Good again, catch, though, Dr. Z. Pardon? Good catch. Yeah. I will renew my comment that, uh, you know, this this has just been such a an efficient way. You know, I... I when I start these meetings, I have um, the zoning bylaw online and the town tax maps online running on a browser in the background, which was why I was able to say that there's a 900 foot common property line between the two parcels. <laughs> Good. Uh, that's something we couldn't do. And I, I think for every, um, for every, you know, the, some of the legislatures are saying things like, you know, you, some older people may not be comfortable enough with electronics to come to these meetings. And I think that for every older person who's not comfortable with electronics, I can find two of them who are not comfortable driving at night anymore. Yeah. And for whom this is the only way to come to these meetings. So, I, to be honest, we've had a number of older people attending these meetings a lot more than I ever thought. And when he's, when zoom first started, I didn't like it. I'll be the first to admit it. Now that we've done it for a while, this is the catch me out. I don't ever want to go back to a live meeting <laughs> because it's so, it's like Bill Swift said, it's so convenient. It's so efficient. I mean, we got contractors and the engineers that are attending these meetings in New Jersey Pennsylvania, all over the place, Cal not California, but, but I mean, all over the East Coast, even in Massachusetts from Boston. It's a huge time saver and money avoidance. And it, it increases attendance. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we oh. definitely have had more public participation through Zoom than we ever had on the second floor at Town Hall. Absolutely correct. I mean, we've had meetings, we probably had, you know, 20 people attending 
except for a highly, con and that's a routinely 20 people. We've had highly controversial ones. Yeah, we've had some big attendances, the, but they had to really be controversial. How many we were had, at the pyramid special permit hearing? 2,000, 2,500? Yeah. Well, and, and even some of the Walmart ones where we fill the cafeteria a couple of times. Yes. Again, highly controversial. You're However, right. how often have we had 20 people attend a routine planning board meeting to talk about a subdivision wreck? We've had a few of those. They, they, so, anyways, and FYI, uh, you FYI. can fit 25 attendees on the screen before you go on to the second screen. Yeah, yeah we can that have is multiple, multiple screens. Right. You can have as many screens as you want. It gets harder to manage the meeting if you have people on multiple screens because you can't. That's why I sort of back you up by scanning for who's got their hand up. Yeah. Um, but uh, but on a routine basis, we can use 25 on a screen. What device are you on, Bill? I'm on my desktop iMac. Okay. As, as am I. And I don't know, but I presume, and maybe you could, if, if, if you have three screens of people, if someone on the third screen raises their hand, Zoom might shuffle them and put them on screen one. I don't know. Yeah, that, that is something I don't completely understand about how it works. Yeah. Only because we haven't had only, we've never had more than one screen. I've been at Selectman's meetings where they have been multiple screens. I've been at UMass unions where we have 16 screens. <laughs> There's like over a thousand people. And I don't know what happens if they raise hands on screen 10, if that, but I do see people jumping around all the time. Yeah. So it, it might have that algorithm that, that would be great that if it brings pe people to the stage. I, I definitely think that this is going to be a trend uh, across, you know, the whole state. Um, you know, I think some communities have adopted remote participation where standing board members could participate virtually or remotely, but obviously you would need to have the regulations within your general bylaw to do that. Ken, um, Ken where do you live? Do you live? I live in East Hampton. Oh, I thought you were living out near Worcester area. I, I, yeah, well, I was living in Sturbridge when I first started at PVPC. Because uh, Bill has been so kind as to send the land court decision regarding the marijuana, uh, well, 120 acres of marijuana in Charlton, uh, where the apple orchard is going. And that's, uh, is that industrial? Is that agricultural? Uh, we should be appraised of that because we're an agricultural community here in Hadley. So, uh, Bill, thank you for sending that information. And uh, well, we fortunately do have a protection because we limit uh, grow sites to tier one in agricultural residential. Okay. And Charleston did not have that. So I was they, I was there during that legal quandary, um, and for a year they were in litigation from select board. Um, to the town meeting, to the planning board making their decision, rescinding decisions. It, it was a mess. Yeah, Superior Court and the Land Court, you're right. Uh -huh. So did, I, did you, did, I may not have sent you, there was a decision that came down from the appeals court at the end of last week. Oh, no, if you, that would okay. be great if you send me that. Yeah, I'll send that to you. That's awesome. After we hang up. Okay. Hey, anyways, anybody have anything else? Hearing none? Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll let Mike second. 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 <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Media's history. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, John.